yarn ngan kaljal bakarden ngan jerp and yen inija karangai kwabara bujra ngan karajan balap karangai mort weirn yira yenin jenangan ngala karajan ngan yenin yira yakin yellow kachak and ninja wang in balap bujra ngan kuda wang and ngan Alec a butcher, I know not wangin, you're a yak and wangin. Cora long Nidiang Bula Nidiang Curling Nija Word on Curling Balap Ninin, Cape Courage Courage Curling, Jinong and Nija Balap Cool, Bilia Cool, Cape Courage Courage Curling Ninin, Quabra Budra Nija. Bula maman, nyiriang, maman, barangin, nija. Kwabra bujra. Ni, alicha, nyin bao, yellow kitchakin. Bokidewa. Balap murdi to maman. Nyin bao. Nyiriang maman, you at, you at courage, balap. Hmm. Alicha Maman, Nija Balak Maya Maya, Balak Bujara, Kalak Bujara. Kaya Alicha Maman, Murdi to Maman, Nija, Nala Karajin, Wang and Ni, Karaj, Nalaka Wang and Nija, Manly. Kaya, hello everyone. I'm pretty sure you know one word out of that little story. <laughs> It'll be the last word. My name is Carl Jilba Carden. I am a curved returning stick, otherwise known as a Kylie. Kylie means boomerang in my grandparents' language, and that language is a Nyungar language from the Nyungar Nation or Bibelman Nation in the southwest of Western Australia. It's really important for me to pay my respects uh, to the Gurungai people, their country that I'm standing on. Um, when we, tri when we cross tribal boundaries or go into anyone else's country, it's important to be respectful and say hello as best you can. I know when I've travelled overseas, I've, I've learned to say hello in various languages, and I'm pretty sure a lot of you would know how to say bonjour or kia ora or yasu, ciao, ni hao, konnichiwa. But... I'm not too sure if any of you would know how to say hello in one of the 150 plus Aboriginal languages from this country. Can I get a show of hands of anyone who can say hello in a dialect from our country? No one. Awesome. So this next part's going to work for me. I'm going to teach you guys. <laughs> I was a bit nervous about someone who put their hand up. But I would like to teach you guys how to say hello in my language. Two syllables. Really easy. Kaya. Can everyone say kaya? kaya? I reckon you can do better than that. <laughs> can everyone say kaya? kaya? There we go. I think the Gurungai ancestors heard that one. It's a different language, but it's important to share what we have, especially language. I wanted to share with you guys something that's really important to me, something that I love, and that's my culture, and particularly my language. And when I say my, I'm representing my nation here, my people. So I now reference as our language. We're very lucky to have our language in the southwest of Western Australia. There are a lot of Aboriginal tribal groups uh, who don't have that beauty, unfortunately, because of the settlement of this country and the history that we're all pretty aware of, I'm guessing. A huge number of Aboriginal languages are vulnerable. They're either critically or severely endangered, dormant, as I would like to call it, rather than being extinct. So it's really important that we revitalise them as much as we can. And when I say we, I mean all us mob. All us mob. The story in language that I shared with you at the beginning uh, was a story about myself being told about how this place got its name. Um, so, you know, I basically said in, in my language that this beautiful land here that we're on, 
a big boat came across the ocean through the inlet and saw these strong Aboriginal men standing on this country. And Governor Phillip and his mob, I always say mob, uh, came in and, and they saw these men and, and they, they admired them. I think, anyway, I wasn't there, but... Uh, and they, the story goes that because of their masculinity and their strength and what they were omitting as Aboriginal men, which they, these wadjalas, or nyiriang, white fellas, uh, weren't threatened by, they named this place Manly. I thought that was rather interesting. And I often think, I wonder what the Goringai mob would have called this place traditionally, what their language is. It's interesting. And my talk today I want to dedicate to one of, one of my greatest uh, teachers. It's two years next week since her passing, and uh, I just thought I'd bring her along with me. You want to learn how to say it properly, you know, our language. That is one of my grandmothers. Her name is Kath, Nana Kath. We call them Kabberly in my language. When I was young, uh, like a lot of my cousins and a lot of family, we started out learning a couple of words here and there in language. It wasn't our first language, spoken language, but we'd learn words here and there, and once we got the hang of it, we'd be teasing each other. You're a manjang. No, I'm not. You mokyang. You, no, you manjang. Mom, she calling me manjang. Will you kids stop it? Just settle down. So uh, I guess the teasing factor was really helpful in learning language back then. Go through school, uh, get a little bit older, a bit more savvy, and then you start to learn a few other words that can get you in trouble with the old fellas. My grandfather played an integral part of my life as well. He used to have Nyungar dictionaries lying around the house. He was a very, very well-respected Aboriginal man in my community. He passed away when I was 12, so I moved from the little country town I lived in in the southwest of WA to Perth, to the big city. So I thought, but now being in Sydney, it's like a little country town itself. I spent a lot of time with my grandmother. Um, the reason I moved to Perth was to be with her after my grandfather passed away so she wasn't alone. And I learned a lot more about family, our kinship system, our clan, our tribe, our culture. At the age of 16, my grandmother dragged me into a wonderful place called Yiriyakin. Yiriyakin is the only Aboriginal theatre company in Western Australia. And I wanted to know what Yiriyakin meant. As soon as I got there, hey, you what Yiriyakin mean? Yiriyakin means stand tall in Yungar language. Now that I'm here looking back, I can see how much uh, of my journey has influenced my love of language and culture. I did a lot of shows with Yiriyakin. I worked in the office. I spent 11 years at this company. I was 16. But the beautiful thing about this company is that language is embedded in their shows, in the office, in their way of life, so it's constantly being used because, let's face it, if you don't use it, you lose it. I worked with so many amazing artists and people in this company, and they've all had an influence on my journey and my role now and responsibility for carrying on their awesome work. The first story I'd like to share with you guys and the opportunity that I had to really immerse myself in language and culture and learn from the elders was, well, a large-scale event called the Welcome to Country. And it was a part of the opening ceremony for the Perth International Arts Festival. This particular year, 2006, the then artistic director wanted to focus on the southwest of WA, the Nyungar Nation. A huge canvas was made called Ngalakort Buja, our heartland. We wanted to put together a great showcase of our culture for everyone because it's an international festival. There's people there from all over Australia, all around the world. I wanted to dance. I wanted to get up there and nyan nyan, dance with the young women. But my elder said, no, 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 you have, to, um, you have to sing with us. And I was really inside. I was like, ah, oh, what? I can't do that. No. But in front of them, yep, no worries, Kabbali, yep, I can do that. Same time, I'm like, oh, my gosh. Huge responsibility. So we get to the event. They put out the chairs, eight chairs. And I said, hey, you mob, who's that eighth chair for? That was for you. I said, no way. I'm not sitting up on the same level with my elders. Even though they invite me to, I'd rather sit down on the ground. Just be grounded. Sit next to them rather than sit up with them. It was a very overwhelming experience. 
but it was a great turnout, to the point where we had our Aboriginal men come up on the stage afterwards, bawling their eyes out with so much gratitude and respect and pride. It's an amazing event, life-changing. The second opportunity, or I guess chapter in my book, that I had the honour of immersing in language and being a part of the fun, uh, was a children's television show called Wabin Time. I present on this show, I'm the host. I have an awesome sidekick with me on this show as well. Um, I should have brought that image, Lee. He's awesome. An Italian lady, uh, how this came about, she has a background in teaching. She used to teach in the Kimberley area in WA, towards the top part, if you haven't been to WA. She speaks Italian and to her grandmother and she worked in a lot of communities and she was really saddened by the fact that a lot of Aboriginal kids out there don't speak in their native tongue to their mob, to their grandmothers, grandparents, grandfathers, mothers, fathers, uncles, aunties. So she spoke to a couple of people. One or a couple of those people she spoke to were affiliated with NITV. The commissioning editor in Western Australia at the time uh, advised her that if you want to do a TV show in Yungar language and you want a presenter and you want somebody that can present, then you need to contact Kylie Farmer. I was on tour uh, doing a show, educational show with Yuri Arkin at the time. She called me. I said, yep, I'm there. Got my interest. Met up with her and started doing this television show in Yungar language for kids, very young, aged between three and six. The other project I'd like to share with you guys uh, was a joint or a collaborative project with Yuri Arkin, again, this awesome theatre company I started out at, and Community Arts Network, Canwa. They were putting together a project in Narijan. Now, Narijan is another kind of smallish town about 35 kilometres away from the town that I grew up in, Pinjali. And when they told me what the project was, pop songs being translated into Nyunga for the kids so they could learn their language. Because a lot of young fellas these days in this country are more interested in, you know, the American music and other influential cultures rather than our own. And Narijan is quite a... It's a beautiful town, but it can be quite prejudiced. In the last two and a half years, there's been about a dozen youth suicides. There's a lot of pressure in it, and that, that town needs a lot of healing. They didn't have to ask me twice. I said, yep, I'm going to be there. I want to be a part of this project. I had the opportunity to be involved as the translator or interpreter. I don't know a lot of these songs that these young fellas sing these days, so it was quite interesting. Um, and for those of you who speak another language, I'm sure you can empathise with the fact that English words, we don't have a direct translation for them sometimes, or often, actually. They chose a song by James Arthur. I don't know, you might have heard of it called Impossible. I think he was like a winner of the X Factor. We don't have a word for impossible in our culture. Nothing was impossible to us back then. <laughs> Everything was set out. <laughs> um, so I was racking my brain thinking, how, how can I manage this? And it took me a couple of seconds. And I went, well, what would our, what would our ancestors or our mob think that's impossible in our culture. Like, what would be impossible? And I thought, well, if there wasn't a sky, that would be something that's impossible. Okay, let me check. Does it fit the rhyme? Does it fit the, the lyric section? Does it have, you know, the right amount of syllables? And the actual song, Impossible, um, a part of the chorus, um, it goes, da, 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 impossible, impossible. Impossible, impossible. Okay, well, how do I fit that with Nyunga? So, Uart means no. Sky we call wool. So I went, hey guys, how about if we sing it like this? If we go, you are wool, you are wool, you are wool, you are wool. And when I heard these young fellas sing that, it just made me cry. Because this is a town where young fellas are suffering. And to give them a bit of their culture back just changed their perspective on who they are.
as young Nyunga people. The next project I want to share with you guys that I had the opportunity of working on, again, working with Yuri Yakin, they were asked to be a part of the Cultural Olympiad for Shakespeare's Globe in London, lead up to the Olympics a couple of years ago. Uh, originally, they were talking to them about interpreting or translating a whole work of Shakespeare to present, because they were putting on all of Shakespeare's work in different languages from around the globe. Time was restricted, so Yuri Akin weren't able to do that. But what we did end up contributing was six Shakespearean sonnets in Yungai language. And I had the honour and the privilege, very humbly, of working on those with this amazing yok, mom yok, Yibyang, my auntie Yibyang. Uh, English name is Roma. And it was a lot of fun. It was really murich. Murich in our language means solid, or it's evolved into being awesome or fantastic, to take our language back over to the motherland. I think it was the first time that we believe any one of our dialects here in Australia was taken over to, uh, to their country and used over there. And it was so well received. We had people who were from here coming up to us afterwards just in awe and with so much pride. Shakespeare's Globe. There's too much of me in these photos. Before I go, I would like to gift you guys something. Before I give you that gift, I just want to say to you, the next time you think about learning another language, exotic language, maybe Spanish or Italian, please consider learning even just a few words or a name of a place or anything from our mob here in our home. It's your home. It's our home. We need to revitalize our language, and we can't do it alone. We need everyone to join that journey. So if there's nothing at uni, if there's no <laughs> courses set out, just talk to someone in the community and find out. I'd be keen to hear how many of you might learn some names from here, your home in Manly. So here's my gift to you. I would like to um, share with you sonnet number 18 in Nyungar language. Birakedla ngankarishnana. Nonorakwapwa Juro Kedla Wara Ma Marang Bam in Born Jilba Jinang Birak Wartkur Ba Wurninwa Wurl Mial Karlwin in Birwin Burda Jinang Bal Bal Yunt Winyanwa Kwap Bortnyanin Balap Ngarda Weirdin Bujara Ngad Khan, Quajit Kool Burtwa Burda Birak Bow Nurnin Nona Kwabara Barangin Bao, Nona Kwab Majitil, Nona Kool Khan Wirnich, Jinang Burtwa Burduan Ngang Nurnin Malachin Kool Karich Maman Wawak Mi al jinang, nuna wong and nija, yang and balang. Thanks very much, it's been an honor.